Good morning, FPC. I'm here with Pastor Andrew, and we are going to look into um, Revelation chapter 8 today. Um, and we're going to uh, kind of dive into this passage a little bit and uh, hopefully kind of see uh, God's heart in it. Um, obviously, some of the language here is very difficult to really wrap your mind around, uh, especially as you look at. Uh, the, the 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 places where God is judging you know, a third of the earth, third of the sea, third of the 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 uh, sun, moon, and stars, that sort of thing. Well, we'll talk about that. Um, so, Pastor Andrew, I'm gonna just kind of hand it off to you. What what were your impressions as you read Revelation eight? Well, yeah. So there's this uh, after you know the the seventh seal is broken in verse one, and that leads. Uh, not immediately, but very quickly onto uh, another cycle of seven, which uh, continues this idea of God's judgment, and it's marked by these seven trumpets. So we have these first four, at least, in chapter eight. And I, I think the thing that just really strikes me is just um, the intensity of God's judgment. And in in particular, it's directed, at least in the first four trumpets, at creation itself. So a third of the earth is burned up, a third of the trees are burnt up, uh, a third of the sea, it turns to blood. I mean, it's, it's focused primarily, uh, and then it gets into the, the sun, moon, and stars. And so um, I'm not sure that that means that we should expect a precise third of the earth to be burned up, or I, I mean, like, I don't know how a third of the sea would turn to blood because it's technically all connected, but, but, but the imagery is just this intense uh, devastation that comes on the earth. And it comes primarily uh, through, uh, through uh, just chaos and disaster in the, in the natural world, at least in the first four trumpets. Yeah. And I, I would agree that in this language, it's, um, it's probably best not to take this as a literal one third of the sea or one third of the earth. Um, especially as you look at, you know, a third of the sun, third of the moon, third of the stars, so that there is a third less, uh, light. Um, and there's a third less night <laughs> as you read the, and you, and the, you, so you're left with another third going, what category is that? You know, but the point is that, uh, all of creation is being devastated um, by these trumpet judgments. They're, they're being affected. And it's not just um, creation in terms of um, land and, and sea and that sort of thing, but it is affecting people, especially when uh, a third of the fresh water, he talks about the fresh water being uh, contaminated. Um, so many people die uh, of that. So this, there's just this catastrophic, um, e events that are taking place where a third of the known creation is being uh, deeply affected in these first four uh, uh, trumpets. I think what stood out to me is uh, when I when I look at the very beginning of this, how it sets up. You had the the um, sixth seal was uh, opened up, and of course you have the the cosmic signs that's that's going on. We have a little pause uh, as we talk about the sealing of the 144,000 and then the um, great multitude that's before the throne. And then now the seventh seal is opened up, which goes right into the judge, uh, trumpet judgments. Um, the unleashing of God's wrath has come, but that doesn't come without this moment of silence in heavens. And, and I can't imagine what that would have been because if you're talking about all this great multitude before the throne, and I would imagine it's loud and, and, and uh, uh, incredibly overcoming, and yet now, boom, silence in heaven for a half an hour. It says for a half an hour, which is kind of odd that that detail would be in there, but I think it's meant to communicate that there's this moment of silence before um, the wrath of the lamb is unleashed on creation. Uh, and, uh, and, and for me, it kind of, to me, it communicates 
what we know about God already. He's long suffering and that he doesn't, he doesn't um, bask in judgment. It, he, he doesn't look at judgment and say, Oh, I can't wait to just unleash my wrath on people. You know, it comes with almost a somberness um, because his justice demands it and he will judge the, the earth and his timing, but, but there's a somberness to it. That's one of the things that really stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, um, you know, it is kind of interesting just because revelation, I mean, really six to 19, the chapter six to 19 are, are really basically just judgment on repeat. Um, and I think it's easy for us to go, well, well, God's just all about judgment, but, but like what you're saying is revelation could have been seven chapters, right? But, but it's not, it's, it's 22 chapters. And although it focuses on God's judgment that we see the purpose throughout is not uh, just to wipe out his creation and start again. Um, it's to give time to repent. Um, it's also to give hope to his people in the midst of suffering that they will be vindicated. And then of course it ends in the new heavens and new earth. But, but yeah, I mean, I was thinking about that number one third. It's like, to me, that's like a significant portion of the earth, but it's not complete devastation, which in, in a sense it could rightly be, but it's not. And so, yeah, that idea that God is, God will judge and it's meant to give us assurance that God is a God of justice, but um, he's also a God of mercy, of, of long suffering, like you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, the fact that he just kind of rolls it out instead of just, you know, <laughs> one act and creation is judged. Uh, he kind of rolls it out. And, and I think part of it is, I, I'm getting a little bit into chapter nine, but I think uh, part of it is to almost um, vindicate, in a sense, his judgment that, yes, indeed, even after all these, these uh, catastrophic events have taken place, judgment on the earth, um, nobody, nobody repented. From that, which means that there must have been a call to repentance, and yet nobody repented. It kind of um, demonstrates the, the 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 deep rebellion within um, the hearts of those that are still undergoing the wrath of God at this point. Um, that, that they, they they just don't repent. Um, so yeah, it's 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 interesting. Uh, I guess for me, I find it incredibly. Um, humbling to know that um, our God is a God who is just and will judge, but yet at the same time, there's a somberness about that. And uh, I think that uh, as believers, I think it we would be um, wise to kind of heed that characteristic about Christ he is long suffering. He doesn't. He doesn't leverage his judgment as something that he relishes in. It's a, there's a somberness to it, and we should have that same somberness when we uh, it, uh, kind of use God's judgment in through our words or as, as leverage. Uh, there, there's a somberness to that that we should uh, heed. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's interesting because the thing that really stood out to me the most in this chapter was, so the, the image of God's throne room is also a temple. And so there's the altar was in Revelation 5, because that's where the, or Revelation 6, that's where the martyrs were. But here he mentions um, that there's an incense altar and a golden censer, and somehow in there is the prayers of the saints. And what stood out to me is the prayers of the saints are burning with the incense on the altar. I'm not sure exactly what the imagery is, but the idea is that they're, they're before God and then the angel takes the fire and throws it down on the earth. And that's what leads to these judgments. And so I think, I think that's interesting on the, on the one hand, it, it teaches us that our, that our prayers matter so much so that actually, so actually in a sense, I hadn't thought of this, but so the lamb opens the seals of the scroll in chapter five into six. But here, what, what sort of sparks the beginning of the trumpets is the opening of the seventh seal, but it's also 
that the prayers of God's people are coming up to him. And that's what leads into these next judgments. So on the, on the one hand, it, it, it matches what we see in the Old Testament, which is, uh, especially in the Psalms, prayers for deliverance, right, from God's people saying, hey, God, help us out here. We're in trouble. But I think what it also teaches us, like what you were saying, just connect it back to that, is the way that we pray for justice is in a way in keeping with God's character. And that, that just makes me think of Jesus's commands to, um, to pray for those who persecute you, right? To bless those who curse you. And so, so um, we do pray for judgment um, because, because, it's, because it is just. At the same time, um, we do it in a way that matches, or we ought to do it in a way that matches God's character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's good stuff. Well, hey, let's uh, let's let's pray together. Father, as uh, we have entered into Revelation chapter eight and see this characteristic about you in terms of judgment and your long suffering, the, the, the somberness about you pouring out your wrath, and yet. Father, the effectiveness of uh, the prayers of the saints. God, I just, I just thank you that you are a God who is long-suffering, and you are a God who uh, does call people to repentance, and you are a God that doesn't um, relish in your wrath. But, Father, you, um, you, you do everything uh, possible to call people to repentance uh, Father, so I, I, I pray that we would be people that uh, do, even as we pray, Father, uh, that we would pray with um, somberness uh, when it comes to your wrath. Um, and, 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 and Father, we'd be slow to just um, want your judgment on people. Um, God, I, I pray that we would um, even use our, our prayers to call for repentance of those that we, um, those that we love and know and, and desperately want to see come to know Jesus, come to know the Lamb. So Father, thank you just for this um, passage and for revealing to us uh, your heart. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, blessings, everyone. Thanks, Pastor Andrew.